In my previous video, you saw that I designed and built this awesome workbench that has fold-up wings along with some hinged supports. Well, in this video, I'd like to continue the build by adding a storage cabinet underneath the bench. For starters, it'll have a pull-out shelf where I can keep a couple of small power tools. There'll be several drawers in the center for storing a variety of smaller things, and I'll have kind of a hidden drawer where I'll keep all of my contraband, and lastly, a large deep drawer for storing all the clamps that I use with the bench. All in all, it should be a pretty straightforward build, but I bet you I can find a way to mess it up. Let's get started. As with all of my projects, the first step is to wait until my neighbor goes to work, and then get all the wood I need by prying it off the walls of his garage. With a track saw, I can cut out the three large panels that I'll need for the cabinet, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. You'll have to guess. Next was a marathon cutting session where I broke down all the rest of the plywood sheets into all the other pieces that I would need. But after a couple hours, I had all the pieces cut and labeled. Now there's plenty of ways to build a cabinet, but I like to use dados and rabbits because the pieces just sort of snap together and they hold themselves square during assembly. So I cut a couple dados for the inner dividers to fit into and then some rabbits along the edges. When it was glue up time, I ran a thin bead down the edges of the dados and dropped in the dividers. Now the dados were a bit tight, so I used some parallel clamps to help me squish the divider all the way down into the dado until it was fully seated. Then to add the bottom, I just put some more glue in the dados and along the back rabbit, and then I could just roll the back and the dividers forward. A few taparoos with the persuader got things lined up and then I could just add on some clamps. And the top went on in pretty much the same way. This just left the sides, and they couldn't have been easier to put on. Just tighten it up in the clamps and then leave it to dry. And when it did, I could remove all the clamps and then add some reinforcement screws through the top and the bottom of the cabinet. And then I had Princess Leia do some sanding for me. And next, I can cut a whole bunch of thin walnut strips. And when I say a whole bunch, I mean a lot. These little guys get glued onto the front and the back of the cabinet to hide all the plywood edges that are visible. To be honest, they're not really necessary, but I've already kind of went overboard making the bench out of walnut, so I figured it would just be weird to not go overboard with this too, right? So to dress it all up, we're going to have black walnut edge banding on everything. And with the bandy clamps, it really went on easy. I just used my flush trim saw to nip off the ends, and then I can move on to doing the same thing with all the drawer pieces as well. That was a whole lot of glue ups, but once each one was done, I could remove all the clamps and then glue up the next batch. And then the ends got cut off of each piece, and there were a lot of them. And then each one got flush trimmed over at the router table. At this point, I could actually start putting the drawer boxes together. I just clamped them down to the bench surface after putting on some glue, and then I could just tack them all together with some brad nails. Nothing fancy here. A bit of sanding to smooth everything out, and that was that. 
So speaking of going over the top on this build, I bought a bunch of undermount drawer slides. Now, I've worked with these things before, and they truly are vastly superior to the standard side mount slides that we all know of. There's zero racking, they work in tandem with one another, they glide so smoothly, and they're soft close. The only catch is that they require a bit more space, which means your drawer boxes need to be a bit more shallow. Once the slides are installed, I can set the drawer box on top of them and give them some gentle taps with the mallet to mark where I need to drill for the locking pins that are in the back. Being careful not to drill all the way through, I make a couple holes for those. Install the clips on the front, and then I can slide it into place and try them all out. Now when installing the drawer faces, I use some playing cards. And since twos and tens are wild, I made sure to put them on top. I clamp the face onto the box, then remove the cards, and then I can drill it and secure it with screws from within. And for those of you that were wondering, that's where the flathead went. And then I just repeated this process until all the drawer faces were on. Now continuing the effort to go over the top for this build, I started to mill up some more walnut to make some fancy drawer pulls. I put in a coved indentation for my fingers, and then chopped them all down to length over at the miter saw. See, I thought it would look cool if I could make the poles the negative shape of the dust trays that are just above them on the bench which I made in the previous video. It would sort of tie everything together since they would kind of match. I glued on a temporary fence using some scraps and then cut out the majority on the bandsaw. And then the rest was trimmed flush over at the router table. So here's the shape that I ended up with. That looks kind of cool. A little bit of sanding to soften all the edges. And then I made a jig for the drill press where I could poke some mounting holes into each one at exactly the same spot. Then I could just center each one onto the face of the drawer, drive in the two mounting screws through the holes, and then plug those holes with a maple dowel. This high contrasting accent, it, it's the same one that I used when I made the bench, and I really think it ties these two pieces together. A little bit of sanding, and they're done. The last thing I made were a couple of angled supports for the pull-out shelf. I just figured since the pole is at the top of the drawer face, and the shelf is at the bottom, that it might be smart to add some additional support. Now, just like what I did with the bench, I'm using regular old Danish oil for a finish. Not only is it super easy to apply, it brings out the rich colors of the wood, and it hardens a bit when it cures to offer some decent protection as well. Plus, it makes my shop smell wonderful. Once I had everything thoroughly wiped down with the Danish oil, I called my friend Jeff and told him that I had a really fun and exciting task for him to do. The two of us lifted this monstrosity down and tried to fit it in a place within the bench only to find out that it was tighter than Willie Nelson's headband. We actually had to use parallel clamps to squeeze it into position. As we tightened the clamps, the cabinet was pushed in a fraction of an inch at a time. But after a grueling hour of grunting and complaining, we managed to get it perfectly installed. And here it is. Check this thing out. I really like how the shape of the drawer pulls is the opposite of the faces of the dust trays above, and the maple plugs really do tie the two pieces together. The pull-out shelf is great for housing a couple of my power tools that I use on a regular basis, and the center section is perfect for giving me four more drawers that I have to search through when I'm looking for the tool that I just had in my hand five minutes ago. And the super deep drawer holds all the clamps that I use in the dog holes on the bench surface. And the little hidden drawer keeps other vital woodworking essentials close by and readily accessible. All in all, this bench turned out amazing. I love it. It's just what my little shop needed. If you like it too and you want to build it for your workshop, I have very detailed step-by-step -step instructions available on my website over at fishersshoponline.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, help me out by giving it a thumbs up and leaving me a comment down below. 
And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hopefully I've earned your subscription and I'll get to see you again on my next video. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. I literally split that piece of wood. Poop. Well, I don't like that. It's not flush. Well, that sucks. Take it off. Oh, helps if you go forward. All right, where's my mallet of persuasion? Okay. I think it might be okay. <gasps> I forgot to put holders on it. How am I gonna pull it out? Oh no! Oh, with. I did it again. You gotta push it harder, Drew. Wait a minute. I'm putting tape on the wrong side of the cut. That's the stuff I need to remove. I need to put the tape over there. Crap! Oh, crap. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> oh no! It doesn't fit! <laughs> I'm off by like a sixteenth of an inch. Let's lift it back up on the bench. Oh boy! Can you let go? Hey! It's in! It. <laughs> we're, we're done! Perfect! It's exactly what I wanted! <laughs> let me get another clamp.